Hi guys, morning. Um, so I'm just taking my morning meds and then I've got to get ready because I've got to go out. Um, but I thought I'd, as I'm just sitting there not doing much, I'll do a video and chat to you guys. Um, so yeah, basically today what's happening is I've got to go out and I've got to hunt down a referee to sign my new ID for my new ID um, so yeah that's gonna be fun um, because I've already checked with my GP um, my GP surgery do not sign documents for ID purposes anymore I think it's because they have too many people um, doing it and yeah or well, I'm not entirely sure but yeah they they don't they don't do it anymore um which is super convenient not um but yeah um so I've got a whole list of suitable people that can be referees um it's like professional person so I've got to go to my bank today to see if they can sign sign it as a referee uh, if they can't I'm going to the council office the housing office to see if someone there can if they can't I'm going to the post office if the post office can't I'm going to the police station if the police station can't I'm screwed and I can't get my ID um, which is rather annoying um, because I do not have a support worker or a social worker who are also two people that can sign it. Um, so I can't just, yeah. Although apparently I'm supposed to have a support worker. I keep being told by different authorities, yeah, you should have a support worker. You're disabled. You're entitled to an adult disability support worker or social worker. I'm like, okay, but when I go to see the social workers and the support workers, they tell me that, no, I'm not entitled because I'm not, they either tell me that I'm not disabled enough, which I have no freaking clue what that means. I mean, there's different variations of disability. Disability affects everyone in different ways. You know, there's lots of forms of disability, like what kind of disability do I have to have in order to be accepted as disabled by support workers and social workers? You know, I'd love to know that. Um, but my carer is, is entitled to an adult social worker or support worker because he's my carer. So, like okay but his job is to care for me now obviously yes he does need help with that I'm not saying he doesn't need a social worker or a care or or whatever he does but it's the fact that okay you'll give the carer the help but not the disabled person it's like they're giving him a runner-up prize. Oh, well done. Look at you. You're such a superhero looking after a disabled person. Here, have a support worker as your prize. You know, it's kind of annoying because it's me that needs most of the help. And John's struggling to get me that help. You know, because when he says to support workers that he has, oh, I need to sort this thing out for Gage, um... The support worker just says, sorry, we can't help you with that. We can ho only help you with things for you. So it's, it's like, what? <laughs> it's a really messed up system. Um, but I think as well, it's because I'm able to communicate clearly enough to get my needs met, my basic needs met, I think. That's what they see. They're like, oh, you're able to say your own name. You're able to say hello to us when we arrived. There's nothing wrong with you. 
um, you know, when they don't realise that I've been taught from a very, very, very young age and I have learnt coping mechanisms as well from a very, very young age on how to talk with professionals like that, to talk to social workers because social workers were always involved with my family when growing up. So I learned how to deal with that. You know, us autistic people, us people on the spectrum, us neurodiverse people, whatever you want to call it, we are very good at talking to social workers and and support workers and doctors and stuff like that. We get and counsellors and therapists. We get really good at doing that because we've had to do that our whole life and we've learned coping mechanisms on how to do that and that that plays against us once we're adults because once we're adults they're like oh well well you're able to communicate with me so you can communicate to get your needs met you don't need help you know when it's like well i do need help because i don't know who i should be communicating with I don't know where I should be going to get this issue sorted out. I just need someone to signpost it for me and point me in the right direction. That's all I need, you know? But these things aren't signposted. That's the only problem. You know, the government and, and these people in, in authority, they don't want to signpost these things that can help you because these things that can help you cost money. And they don't want they 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 want to keep hold of that money basically that's the way I see it anyway, but yeah. Um, so I'm going to get ID today. Hopefully it'll be straightforward, and I'll go straight in the bank first court port of call, and they'll say yeah we can do that, and my ID will be sorted today, and then within a few days, I'll have it posted to me, and I will have my first ever. It is actually my first ever official photo ID. I mean, I had a little ID when I used to go to college, but it didn't really get me into pubs and clubs and stuff like that. It was basically to use around college and stuff, you know. Um, but that was like when I was a teenager years ago and it wasn't like a proper official thing. Um, so this ID, I'm hopefully get in in the next few days if all goes to plan is a proper citizen card it's got the pass up pass thingy it's basically made by the passport office it's basically the id portion of the passport without the ability to go traveling and stuff if that makes sense it's just the id not the so it it's made by the passport office and it is widely recognised. So, but it's actually really, really cheap. I think it was about £18 uh, if I wanted it like second class post. It would take like 21 days or something to get to me. Or £35 for the fast track to urgent one, which I've gone for. Because I thought I don't want to be sat around waiting weeks and weeks for this thing. You know, I want to get it done and dusted and sorted. So I don't mind paying the extra little bit of money for that. And to be honest, it's a lot cheaper than a passport. I mean, I don't know how much a passport is these days. But last time I checked, it was like 70, 80 pounds. So, you know... And I can't go on planes or anything because of my heart condition. And I'm not planning on travelling out of the country. So I don't really... I don't really need a passport, you know. I just need some ID. Um, um, but yeah, so it's my first ever official government approved id which is really cool um and to top it off the cherry on the cake it will be my first ever id also will have my new true name and true gender on it 
which is really really cool which kind of makes it even cooler to be honest so it won't have my dead name on it um so my first ever id is gonna have my actual chosen name and my gender so mx gay chicks rather than suki or susanna um higgs um so yeah that's gonna be really cool can't wait to get it and the thing is as well i've been going mad trying to take a photo of myself because you've got to have like a passport style photo and there's certain criteria you gotta follow um so like you gotta have a cream or beige background or whatever um you're not allowed to like smile and laugh you gotta have a natural um face so you know i suppose you could smile a little bit but not like a giant like um joker grin or something that's probably not a good idea you know so and you can't wear hats in passport photos can't do this can't do that so i'm trying to follow that criteria but trying to take a good photo because i want a photo i don't know if this will make sense to a lot of you to to some of you that are non-binary or transgender or whatever you may understand a bit more but i want a photo of gauge you know i want my brand new id with my brand new identity i want a picture of that identity on that brand new id you know i want a picture of gauge on there i don't want a picture of susanna i want a picture of gauge um and that's proven difficult i mean it is yesterday i was stood here for ages just snapping pictures of myself like just looking at them like ugh no and i was i said to john it's like i've forgotten how to take a photo um <laughs> so today at some point i've got to try and get a decent photo of myself of gauge um because yeah so i also signed up uh and updated my sunflower lanyard card thingy um so the sunflower lanyard and card it's a scheme that uh to mark hidden disabilities um they have a website i actually put the link for the website actually on facebook i believe yesterday so if you head over to my facebook page um it's a bit confusing because i have two pages on there i have my personal account and my advocacy advocacy page and they both have the same name and the same picture so i'm getting confused with them so i'm planning maybe in the future to turn my personal page into my professional page into my advocacy so i'll slowly be moving stuff over because it's going to make it a lot easier on me so that then i don't have to keep switching between two pages i have one page and i can deal with everyone in one place <laughs> rather than keep switching you know it's going to make it a lot easier for me and that's what i'm trying to do downsize and get everything that's scattered and gather it all up in one place so it's easier for me to deal with you know um so the advocacy page i have running at the moment will likely be shut down soon i'm starting to make my content on my personal page so my personal page also has the name gage higgs also has the same picture as youtube uh so i'm easy to find um uh but yeah you'll be able to find the sunflower lanyard link for their website where you can go and buy your own um sunflower lanyard and card if you like or buy one for someone you're caring for or you, they have carer ones on there so if you are a carer 
you can buy one of these sunflower lanyards which makes it actually really helpful because both me and John have one obviously John has hidden disabilities as well but he wears his for his hidden disabilities but also as my carer and when we've been out and about in busy places um, he's wearing his one I'm wearing mine it's easier for staff to locate my carer if I've ended up getting lost um, I'm like yeah he has a green lanyard sunflower lanyard like mine and they're like cool and yeah and it's easy to identify him as my carer um, with one of those on as well so it it makes life easier so when we're queuing in queuing to get in places especially if the queue's busy I tend where I'm small and quiet and I kind of go in my shower when I'm in big crowds a lot of the time I tend to get shoved to the back and people kind of I become invisible basically so then me and John get separated easily and John because of his autism and, and his ADHD and the fact that he's all over the place as well and he likes to chat to people so he kind of isn't fully paying attention to me he kind of forgets and then he turns around to speak to me and I'm not there and he's like oh crap where where did they go <laughs> um, so yeah it's a lot easier so then if I end up at the back of the queue and he's at the front he just says, oh, hang on a minute, I've, my um, disabled partner, I'm their carer, they've kind of gone missing and they can easily locate me with the lanyard. Um, but also the lanyard card on it has little symbols. So each symbol means something different. So obviously the symbol of a person in a wheelchair obviously means I'm a wheelchair user, I need accessibility you know I need an accessible toilet I need ramps I need lifts um, I have the little picture of the eye which means I have sight loss issues and I may need help in darker settings or I may need large print stuff like that you know so basically I can show this card to um, like when I'm going to venues and stuff I can show this card to the staff there and they know exactly what to do to help me then because they look at these symbols and like yep yeah, okay cool and I don't have to try and communicate with them over loud music over loud people you know I can just show the card and yeah I, I get the help I need um, it's brilliant for getting basic needs met and stuff like that um, but yeah I'm getting my new one of those in a couple of days hopefully with my new name on it and the great thing is as well they've started doing I don't know when they started doing it but they've started doing the LGBTQ support lanyards as well so it's it's the normal green lanyard with the yellow sunflowers and the card with the green and the yellow sunflowers so that's normal it's just the card has a has the um lgbtq alloy flag uh on the court on one corner of it and the lanyard at the bottom here near the clip it has the lgbtq flag as well which is really cool uh which I think helps as well identify me as LGBTQ to the staff members when I'm needing help so then they know automatically okay you may not be using certain pronouns so they know then to ask oh what are your pronouns you know and they can refer to me in in that way it makes it a lot easier I think um because I did contemplate wearing one of those badges that says my pronouns on it. But I thought, I don't know, that seems like it could be really helpful. 
but it also seems like it could make me a target a bit more. I mean, you could say the same about the sunflower lanyard. I mean, but as a whole, my disability on its own makes me a target. So, you know, no matter what, I'm going to be a target. So, but yeah, um, so I'm getting a sunflower lanyard with my new details on it. I'm getting my ID with my new details on it. So, yeah. I feel like I'm actually gauged now because um, I've changed everything over to my new name and new details with my NHS records, hospital records, doctor records, stuff like that. Um, so now all my letters, medical le letters are coming through with MX gauge on it, um, which is really cool. Um, my bank sorted that. I've sorted most things. I think there's only I've sorted out like the pip stuff and to my new name and everything. Uh, housing, even the utility bill companies. We've done that. It's been a long journey, and it is it it was a bit tricky at times because. We had a bit of trouble contacting some people to change it but it was actually quite easy most of the time because i just waited until i had to deal with a certain thing so like i waited until i got a bill through saying yep your annual water bill is due so i thought right i gotta ring up and pay that anyway whilst i'm on the phone paying that i might as well just change my details while i'm there you know so it's been easy that way uh, I just had to sort out the main important ones like the government stuff like national insurance, my benefits, um, NHS stuff, you know, hospital stuff. That was the main stuff I had to get sorted first. Things like utility bills and whatnot weren't a major priority right then. Um, but yeah, it's all slowly making it and I'm yeah so now I'm officially fully gauged near enough there's a few things I need to do um I have to go for um some more therapy I have to go and speak to a therapist about gender dysphoria um and then hopefully work on getting top surgery. Now that's, I know that's something that I was like, I don't think I want to go for that because it, because of my heart. And obviously surgery is dangerous for everyone, obviously, but it's a little more dangerous for someone who has a heart condition or any other serious existing condition it can be even more dangerous. So I didn't want to put myself in danger for what seems like something like just cosmetic surgery, you know? Um, but since thinking more on it and since changing my name and coming out fully, it's done wonders for my mental health. It's helped my self-esteem my confidence um john's even said to me i've noticed you being a bit more social when we're out i'm like really he's like yeah you're actually walking up to people and starting a conversation with them i'm like okay yeah that is weird that's not something i would usually do i would do back years ago my social anxiety was so bad that I had trouble starting a conversation even with someone I know really well you know so starting a conversation with with a stranger would I would never do that usually John would try and coax me into a conversation so if he's talking to a group of people and they're talking about something 
he'll go, oh, Gage is interested in that. Well, it used to be Suki, but we'll go with my new name because that's who I am now. He's like, Gage is interested in that. Um, and then he'll try and pull me into the conversation. And he'd be like, oh, Gage, you tell him about this thing you like. And, um, and then I'm just sort of like trying human for a minute. Um, try and fit in, try and fit in with the humans, um, but fail every time. Um, <laughs> no, um, but yeah, so I'm, do I'm doing a lot better now. And I think that is because I came out and because I started being honest with myself. And yeah, so I'm getting a lot more confidence now. And I think... Um, if I get the top surgery, I will look, I will have a body, my body will look more like Gage, if that makes sense. Um, I'll look more like myself, I'll feel more like myself, because that is one part of my body I have never liked since it appeared when I hit puberty. And I've always hated it, never wanted it. I felt like my whole life was over when that happened, when puberty happened. I um, feel like it destroyed me because it changed my normal boy looking body into, yeah, into a girl, <laughs> you know? And yeah, I'm definitely not a girl. I know that now. I'm not a girl. I'm also not a boy. Um, I'm non-binary. I'm a. Someone said to me, "You're a bit of both." I'm like, okay. Can't remember who who it was. But someone told me, "Oh, you're a loaf of bread." I was like, what? <laughs> They're like, "You're a loaf of bread. Best of both." I was like. Okay, <laughs> I'm a loaf of bread. Right. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, um so that is something I'm looking into now and I think that could help my mental health a lot. Um, but obviously I have to make sure it's the right decision first, and that's why I'm going through the a bit of the um gender dysphoria counselling um and therapy and stuff like that to make sure I am making the right decision I'm 100% sure I'm making the right decision for definite you know but the way my mental health is it flip-flops one day I'm all for it and I'm like yeah and then the next day I'm like oh well maybe this ain't a great idea you know but I'm slowly learning that's how gender dysphoria works, you know. Um, like one day I'll feel more like a boy and I'll be, you know, great and everything. But then another day I'll feel more like a girl. and ugh. So not that there's anything wrong with girls. Girls are fine. It's just I'm not a girl. Um, but yeah, I'm probably babbling and rambling on a lot. But I know this is something I haven't talked about a lot with you guys on video is um, the LGBTQ stuff and um, gender and all this sort of stuff and my pronouns and everything. I know it's something I haven't talked about a lot, but that's mainly because it's something... I've not fully understood you know I'm only just learning and understanding it and understanding myself properly and I'm only just been given the right language to use to explain this thing you know so basically you're learning about all this LGBT you're basically learning about all my LGBTQ stuff as I'm learning about it myself, if that makes sense. Um, so 
hopefully I will talk more on camera about it and you can follow my journey into getting top surgery and everything like that um but yeah it's been tricky to juggle all of that and then all of my medical stuff as well lately um because i've had a lot of medical issues happening all at once and it, it and then medical appointments that i've got to go to as well um so right uh, and then having the cancer scare with this weird growth under my tongue that freaked me out for a few days and sent my mental health plummeting um but i got the all clear with that it's not cancer so i'm pleased with that and happy and my mental health is getting a bit better now from that so yeah and because my mental health plummeted my eating plummeted as well my aphid um that's another thing i'm still learning a lot about i've only just been given the correct language to explain that as well i like it's so annoying because i look back at childhood and i'm like if I knew all these words to explain what was happening to me, my life could have been a lot more different. If I had the language, you know, if I knew more about autism, more about ARFID, more about LGBTQ stuff when I was a kid, I would have under maybe understood more what, what was going on with my mental health and, you know, um, and what was going on with me physically and I may have been able to I don't know but they say don't look back because that's the past the past has happened um, there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing you can do to change it so put the past in the past and carry on moving forward which is what I'm trying to do you know and I think changing my name by default changing my gender coming out as non-binary pansexual um i'm gonna say that's you know that that's a pretty big step towards the future you know so that's a lot of change all at one go as well um but yeah so but yeah, I've took my meds now, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to finish my tea. Uh, maybe have something to eat before I go out. But I'm going to get dressed and go out. Um, and get this ID thing sorted. Um, so yeah, it sounds really silly. It's just ID, you know. But when it's my first ever ID with my brand new name and gender and everything on it it's just it's a big step for me you know it's big for me it may not be big to everyone else but it's big to me you know um and we should celebrate the small things you know um but yeah I'm also going to get dressed in a sec and then try and take another passport style photo. Hopefully it will work out. <laughs> See, I have loads of photos of me as Gage, if that makes sense. I've got loads of photos I've taken recently of, of myself where I feel I look more like myself in them if that makes sense I have loads of them um, I'm forever taking selfies I think I might be a bit obsessed with it to be honest um, um, but yeah I've taken loads of selfies recently of myself of Gage and they all look brilliant they all look like Gage but none of them are good enough for none of them meet the criteria 
for a passport photo, you know, so. Screw it, you know what I might do actually on the face on Facebook, on my Facebook is I'm gonna just put a post up with all of my recent photos I've taken of Gage and then a couple of, not Gage, a couple of Susanna so we can see the difference. It doesn't look like there's much difference, to be honest, but I haven't changed a lot, to be honest, physically. Mentally, I've changed a lot. Um, like, a lot. I feel like a whole new person. Uh, like, personality-wise, apparently, I've changed as well. People have said to me that, look, they feel like they're talking to a different person when they're talking to me. Uh, now that I've come out. Um, and that is for one simple fact. I've stopped masking. Well, not entirely stopped masking. I still mask occasionally when it is absolutely needed. But I've tried to stop masking. So now when I go into a social situation and we're all chatting I stop masking and I just start chatting I say what pops into my head sometimes that's probably a bad thing <laughs> um, but I used to not say anything like things would pop into my head even if someone's talking about something really interesting that I have an interest in and I know a lot about it and they start talking about it I'm like, oh, I'm thinking in my head, oh, yeah, I know about that. I could join in this conversation if I wanted. But for some reason, I never did. And I would just stay quiet. But now I'm like, yeah, I know about that. And then I'll just start talking. And, yeah, it's tricky to shut me up now, apparently. But, um, as you could probably tell, because I said, like, few minutes ago yeah I'm gonna end this video now and I'm still rabbiting on <laughs> um, but yeah I will let you go now guys thanks for sitting there listening to me ramble while I take my meds and drink my morning cup of tea um, but yeah I'm gonna let you all go now <laughs> Um, I shall speak to you later. Bye-bye.